What is up, beautiful people? It's Wolf Brother Mythos from the channel Frost and Fist, and welcome uh, to this messed up camera angle. <laughs> tonight it's a short stream. Uh, tonight it's a short stream, as a uh, you know, especially short because I'm at the bottom of the screen here. Anyways, tonight's a short stream because it is a it is literally crunch time. It is literally the last minute. It's the night before the narrative event. A big three thousand point. Uh, event that Atlas and I will be going to all weekend, and um, yeah, it's crunch time. Uh, I mean, I've hit my minimum. There are at least three colors on these models, and the basing has been kind of done, started, uh, which I can easily slap some super glue and snow down on these to finish the basing. Um, but yeah, it is crunch time, and I'd like to get these models finished before the event. I mean. Like I said, they're already three colors. They're already going to be kind of finished. Especially if I slap some snow basing on them to make the basing look finished. Um, but I want to get them to, you know, what's a playable level for me before. So we're going to do a short stream tonight. And after the stream, guys, I don't mean to be... I know it's not po the popular thing to do. And I don't mean to be uh, a jerk. But, like, at the end of a short stream, there won't be a hobby hangout. I've got to anti-socially do a rush paint job uh, and pack and get everything ready tomorrow because it's top of the morning, getting up and going. i got to be ready to go out the door at 7 a.m. Uh, so I want to make sure everything's packed by the door, ready to go for tomorrow by the time you know I wrap up tonight. So I, mean, I, I really wanted to uh, squeeze in the stream. I want to hang out with my friends, uh, enjoy my time online on YouTube with you guys, but it's going to be a short hangout today. I'm going to stream for about an hour max, and then I really got to focus in and get ready for tomorrow's event. So it's so good to see you guys, though. I wanted to kick my weekend off with my friends, with you guys. Uh, just kick, kick the weekend off right. You know what I mean? Killian, good to see you, buddy. Uh, you are indeed first, buddy. Oversoul Gaming, good to see you, brother. <laughs> here for the support i appreciate you brother all right so uh in our mad dash i'm gonna go table down a so we can start painting but b i can show you kind of what's the last things for me to knock out 
before my event. So we're going to switch down to the tabletop. I'm still going to keep talking to you guys. But as per usual, I will blink out the camera while I reorient it. And that's why I wasn't too fussed on getting the camera to show my face super well because I knew I'd be moving the camera table down anyways. Just uh, putting the camera on the stand right now. Pointing it down to the work surface. Boom. There we go. I know my desk is even messier than usual. I apologize. It's just been mad hectic. I did. So you last week when you guys saw me, uh, I was working on, I finished up Lady Creed and was working on the tanks for my brother's Imperial Guard army, which he's taking to Richard Smith. Good to see you, brother. Who took my dice? I hope you're doing well, brother. Um, so last week you guys saw me finishing up the tank or working on the tanks for my brother Atlas because uh, he's bringing his 72nd dust levels of the Imperial Guard uh, to the event. And I did put those in his hand this week, you know, and uh, when you do a paint job for someone else and you put it in their hands and they're, they're happy with the result, that's one of the best feelings in the world. So I was glad to get that to its owner. I will try and steal it back from him at some point so that way I can do a little showcase of the tanks I painted up but then it's on to my stuff now I did have to compromise on my list in a couple of places I was going to take three th or nine thunder wolves regular thunder wolves um, and uh, which means I would have had to paint up two last ones uh, to get that last squad of thunder wolves in there uh, I compromised on that I'm taking a squad of wolfen for that last set of three they're about the same points um, because I just wasn't able to get the the Thunderwolf Cavalry done. Um, and another compromise. I realized that the Lancer I have here. So here. It's kind of an amalgamation. And at a WYSIWYG tournament. I realized isn't going to work. Because I've got the Impulsor Body. Which will work for these Gladiators. Especially with the perfect side sponsons here. However. If you look closely. My turret that I printed out. Or that I had printed is a um, exter uh, a repulsor exterminator turret because I've got not only the laser destroyer cannon but I've also got the onslaught gatling cannon here on a lancer this is just a big fancy lamp and so I have the wrong one anyone who doesn't know what the word the term WYSIWYG means it means uh, what you see is what you get and so when you go to an event typically you have to have your models representing the right war gear or equipment you know so that way what your opponent sees is exactly what they're getting uh and because my turret is not WYSIWYG I decided I wasn't going to even try to take the Lancer which means it does save me one last thing I don't have to paint which is a good thing um even though I've put some time into it this week that I could have saved and it's already uh uh you know I put some time into it I could have been used painting this other stuff but that's fine uh, and so as my anti-tank I'm taking in place of that, because as we all know, you take a Lancer because you need some good anti-tank. I'm taking two, uh, a, a couple of Armager Warglaives in their place, and I really feel like they're going to be the good anti-tank I need uh, to fill in that spot. Home stretch, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, even better feeling when your painter does a great job. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad you like it, man. So these are mostly done. I need the helmets and honestly, like, you know, like uh, most of the detail on the chest and whatnot, I've already painted. You're not going to see, but I've got these eradicators done, mostly done. I need to paint the helmets and the shoulder pads. And then like, I need to put the null oil down on the metallics and I'm going to do my little heat bloom on the barrels here, but that's the multi melt guy. And then these are your two standard. Uh, melt a rifle uh, eradicators so they're coming along I know they're not a lot of color but usually my spot color comes from the shoulder pads here um, so I'm gonna I just do need to do the silver trim on those and then I've got the helmets printed here uh, I use these little night style helmets I like how they look they're just a blob of green uh, resin right now so you know I don't know why I'm holding it up to the camera but anyways, I wanted to stick like the wolf style head on there like I did the apothecary, uh, you know, just to give it a little more wolfy flavor. 
but because the these guys come in the kind of the domed heads or you know the domed uh, armor you know it's over the helmet section uh, this helmet I wanted to put in there because the wolf ears are a little too tall just wouldn't fit uh, like always I just love how blue everything is thank you brother it is my favorite color to work with so uh, a lot of my painting reflects that they look great brother thank you so much now, so these are very close to being done. And like I said, if I just slap the helmets in and put the shoulder pads on and uh, put the snow on for basing, those would be pretty much ready to go as far as minimum for the tournament. Two of the, one of these guys needs a helmet, one needs a head. Okay, but overall, I've done the shoulder pads. Uh, I haven't started the metallics yet. Uh, also, if you'll notice, I've got the darker blue down for the base cut tone. And I'd like to bring, so this is, my darker blue and I usually um, highlight it up to this color so I've got the darker color on the rifles I need to bring that up and of course being hell blasters and plasma guns I like to do the little plasma glow on the coils here um, so yeah we've got a, a bit more painting to do so metallics need to be done on all these you need to highlight the blues uh, and so yeah the hell blasters need a fair bit more work we're going to focus fire though. We're going to start on the hell blasters or I mean the eradicators before we move on to the hell blasters. And I think for this dark light dreamer, good to see you, my brother. And uh, a fellow ultramarine player there who took my dice as blue all the way. This is my custom color for my space wolves, by the way, when I first started playing, I love the lore and the units for the Space Wolves. I didn't like the more kind of pastel Easter egg blue that a lot of people had at the time. I've since seen some phenomenal painters pull off the Space Wolves blue color, like uh, Brother Rob from the TMP. Uh, however, uh, years ago, and I think I've been in, at this for about seven years now, that, paint, that color scheme didn't appeal to me, so I made my own color scheme which was black and silver and it started with a hint of blue it was mostly black and silver kind of to reflect what i imagine what i think of as the colors of moonlight but the um but the more that or the the more that i've been in this hobby the more i've been kind of injecting color into that paint scheme and so you know that's where you know i've started bringing like i use way more blue now than i used to and you'll see me inject in some other colors, like I use purple for all my plasma uh, and las cannon gl uh, glow nowadays, uh, or like this lantern here um, that uh, freak. I mean, uh, Al from V Twin Gaming helped me with. You know, uh, you know, I injected some orange into this color scheme, and just because I had such a stark black and silver paint job for so long, the more I paint these, the more I kind of like look for ways to add color to what I'm doing. Are you still going to try and paint the cavalry before tomorrow? Oh, there's no way, brother. There's no way. So I am taking, I did uh, take my Wolfenden out of storage today. They're on the table ready for me to pack up and I'll be taking the Wolfenden in their place. I vastly, vastly overestimated uh, uh, how much I'd be able to get done this week. And of course, I'm going to be honest. I have just like chained myself to the painting desk this week, you know, like um my wife's birthday was this week and so even though we went out last weekend to officially celebrate her birthday you know i did try and spend some time with her today and i treated her uh to dinner the other night and you know we spent some time you know watching stuff and playing stuff together this week and i didn't want to you know have everything painted and ready to go at the cost of you know being antisocial with my family you know so i made sure to spend some time with the family this week um and I didn't, you know, sit here and hustle as much as I could have. But, you know, I think it was worth it to spend some extra time with the family. Oh, crap. I missed it. Happy late birthday, Tiffy. Says Darklight Dreamer. She says, thank you, thank you. Hope you're doing well tonight, Darklight. My man. realize I have the camera 
further back than I normally do. Family should always come first. Absolutely. And so that's why I feel like I could have made more progress this week. But yeah, we just chose to make sure we spent some time with the family this week. And uh, it's a good quality time. And, and it's part of some of our spending some time together. You know, um, in lieu of some of the times that we would normally be watching stuff together. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is one of my wife's favorite games of all time. Oh, I'm not even painting on camera. I slid the camera closer and didn't move my hands. Um, and so she's been helping me with my playthrough. And uh, she during some of the times I was like, what do you want to watch, babe? And she's like, I want to help you work on your Baldur's Gate file. And so together, uh, beat Baldur's Gate 3 this week, which was really cool already started another character because the game is so good my first playthrough I played an eldritch knight and I romanced a character named Lazel which was all of it was amazing I really enjoyed playing my eldritch knight he was a hell of a beat stick just dealing so much damage and like i kept a green necklace on the whole game because it was an amulet of misty step but when you deal that much damage in melee being able to get anywhere you want on the map pretty much is just so clutch plus with high strength i had a hell of a jump and between the misty step and then just regular jumps uh I used to be able to, or I used to, like I didn't just beat it like, you know, earlier this week. Uh, I could clear a whole lot of the map. <laughs> In fact, um, my uh, wife and I just have been jokingly saying that leg day is OP in this game. <laughs> leg day OP. Uh, I've heard very good things about the Fallout TV series so far. Uh, just working, nothing to write home about. Oh man, I understand that. Uh, yeah, I told Emily we got to watch. That's got to be what we watch together after Avatar. Oh man, that sounds good. Yeah, that's on the list for uh Tiffy and I too. Being that both of us have been, at some point or another, just obsessed with Fallout, you know. Oh man, my hands are shaking. Like I've got embraced against the table here, but my hands are still just shaking more than usual. Alright, one shoulder pad. Done. And normally I don't consider these finished until I do the decals. I'm probably going to, I may have to forego decals tonight because just the process of putting it down, letting it dry. Then you put down your next um, bit of a decal softener, you let it dry. You put down some decal softener, you let it dry. And I'm not sure I got that kind of time, dry time tonight. So, you know, we may forego the decals until after the event. Would I like to be able to slap decals on everything? Sure. But this is very much crunch time right now. Um, let's see. Uh, good night all. Good night who took my dice, my brother. You have a wonderful night. Absolutely love Fallout. Huge fan. I've already decided I will not be watching any more of the Fallout show on Prime. So disappointed. Oh, that's a shame. Got to get my hands on Baldur's Gate 3 eventually. Island Wake 2 would still be my favorite 2023 game of the year, but Baldur's Gate 3 deserved all its awards. Absolutely. Uh, overstimmed, maybe? 
Um, that's quite always possible with me. You know, I love uh, I love coffees, and I definitely drink it throughout the day. So it is quite possible to be a little overstimmed. In fact, there was a meme I saw about that. I think Zambies from um, she's an Instagram slash Twitch uh, Warhammer personality. She calls herself Zambie Decays. And uh, she put up a meme once of uh, her chugging uh, just a bunch of coffee. And then her going to paint and being like, why are my hands so shaky? <laughs> and I'm like, yep, yeah, I feel that. <laughs> I was like, literally me. Um, Fallout show is almost perfect, just as good as the last of a show. Best adaptations ever. Game adaptations seem to be better as show versus movies, although Sonic, Mario, and Pikachu are also good. And one of the things that I really dislike about painting Space Marines is like when you have, like I love the look of the border on the shoulder pauldron, but man, trying to get that paint on the inner lip of that border without getting it onto the paint job of the flat part is just sometimes so nerve-wracking. The Fallout show perfectly hits the vibes of the games in terms of comedy and violence. The, the parts that are happy have a sinister maliciousness behind them, like We Happy Few, also very lore accurate. Nice. My kids love the Mario movie. We went back to watch the old cartoon of it. It was a very interesting experience. Oh, man. You know, like, I'm aware that it's bad, but I have a lot of fond memories of watching the Mario Brothers cartoon. Sort of those things like, you know, you don't realize how bad it is if that was your experience at the time growing up, you know? Actually, I think even then we knew it was cheesy. Where the Mario Brothers and Plummins are game, we're not like the others who hit on the drain with the princess in trouble. You can call us on the double. Um, something, something, something. You'll be hooked on the brothers. Ooh. <laughs> there's this one episode because like the cartoons are always preceded by this live action bit and man i gotta say like the the mario and luigi of the live action guys that were they were just like absolute dorks and i remember this one episode where the live action mario and luigi um, again, in the part before the show, the cartoon used to come on, it was just like this little interlude bit. And there's this one episode where Mario and Luigi are just like absolutely obsessed with, uh, Elvis. But like one is obsessed with skinny Elvis and one is obsessed with fat Elvis. It's kind of funny. Anything lore accurate about that? Nope. Kind of funny. Yep. 
and at the beginning before the cartoon starts they're like arguing over which one's the best and at the end of the cartoon it cuts back to them and it they end up on the um you know quote, quote unquote confirming the uh Elvis left to travel space with the aliens theory. You know, making fun of the conspiracy theorists. And because that was so long ago, those of you who don't know, you know, there were conspiracy theory for a while that uh, Elvis was abducted by aliens and the government covered it up and sometimes when people would be abducted by aliens they would see all this you gotta love when people make fun of the conspiracy theorists All right, that's the third shoulder pad down. Bonus at 2%. I'm hopping off. Y'all have a great night, and I will talk to y'all next week. Y'all stay awesome, you legends. Have a great night, brother, and I'll see you in the morning. The rap kills me every time they do it. Yeah, absolutely. That Mario Brothers rap is in the movie. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, great character development. Uh, Vault Dweller becomes hardened, ghouls become softened. Nice. Okay, I don't remember which one of these shoulder pads I was working on. Well, actually, I remember, I think this one on the paint bottle is one I was working on first. So, while the other's dry, I'll put this one on. Unfortunately, I'll have to wait to do the other one until after I get off stream because I was looking for I have these um, Ragnar style shoulder pads and here are the ones I have that are Terminator sized so they were a little too big I need to find my smaller stash of them but I have these Puppets War wolf shoulder pads right that I was going to put on this side, but their Terminator ones are just way too massive. So, this kind of looks like the, the Witcher symbol a little bit. Um, but, again, these Terminator shoulder pads are way too massive, so I've got to find my regular sized ones. Um, so I'll have to do that after the stream. But, for the meantime, they're just going to have one shoulder pad for tonight. Well, for the stream. Like I said, after the stream, I'll look for the, regular, the other shoulder pads. We're not like the others who get all the fame. Oh, all the fame! If your sink is in trouble, you can call us on the double. Faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. Oh! Yes. Man. That's one of those things um, where... Uh, I'm pretty sure I misheard those lyrics for like 30 years, apparently. Get all the fame. I always thought it was hit on the dream. Huh. And I question that. After all, what plumber gets more fame than the Mario Brothers? Unpopular opinion? I really like the 90s Mario Brothers movie. I, am I aware that it was bad, you know? A bit cheesy. Yes, but you know, there's something I like about old cheesy movies. Like, I liked the cheesy Mario Brothers movie from the 90s. I liked the cheesy Double Dragons movie from the 90s. Much like you, I'm not the biggest fan of rap, but specifically 
like the dark and dirty stuff, the hardcore gangster rap. I like nerdcore comedy rap focused on video games. That's fair. I am not a fan of the um, genre in general, the overall rap, uh, rap, but I do have exceptions. You know, like obviously, you know, the funny Mario Brothers rap, you know, I'm cool with. Um, I love Linkin Park, and even though I never used to be into rap, you know, I've always liked Mike Sh uh, Shinoda's um, rap bits in Link Par Linkin Park. Okay, they look a little more complete now with one shoulder pad. After the stream, hopefully I'll find their other shoulder pad. And they're going to be uh, silver. Um, you know, like much like the Witcher symbol, I plan on making the little wolf face silver. And that'll cover the other shoulder pad. And if not, then I'll just grab a couple more aggressor shoulder pads like this and do the other side. But that is there. And I'm feeling a lot better with one of their shoulder pads, uh, one set of their shoulder pads done. So. Nerdcore is what they call stuff like the Mario Brothers rap, rap focused on nerd stuff. The stupendium is best for this. His lyrics are genius. Nice. They're fun if you're expecting cheesy fun. Yeah, exactly. That is not the... <laughs> okay. Focus up, Mythos. I have this red paintbrush that you guys see me use all the time, right? And then I picked up this that has no brush at the end. I was just using it to hold the shoulder pad. Had a little bit of a sticky tack on the end. Holding the shoulder pad while I painted it, right? But anyways, out of the corner of my eye, I grabbed this one because it was red and stuck it in my mouth and there was no brush there. Epic Rap Battles of History... Is one too, because where else can you watch Boba Fett uh, rap battle Deadpool? You know, it's funny because, like, I always thought the Mario Brothers one was dorky but a bit funny. But uh, I've watched a few episodes of Rap Battle and just couldn't get into it. But once again, I know I'm in the minority there. I know it's very popular, lots of people like it. Huh, this is Agrax. I thought I was doing, uh... Null Noil. Yeah, this will be a little bit dirtier. Although, if it comes out looking uh, good, then I'll claim that this is what I intended all along. Yes, Agrax. That's what I meant. Now, you would think that me noticing now that this is the wrong wash that I'm putting on this I would stop and put on the correct one. But since I've done it on one, I need to do it to all three. Sometimes I'd rather be not correct, but consistent. Plus, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. Admittedly, not all of them. You have to find the ones that vibe with you. Some of them genuinely suck. Uh, like one that we did recently, King Kong vs. Godzilla. That was terrible because they were too focused on voice accuracy. Alright. For the barrels, we'll stick with the Agrax here, but for the rest of the Metallics here, I'm switching over to the blue one. Roosevelt versus Winston Churchill is one that uh, everyone tells people to start with. That one goes hard. And everything about it is full. It's nice. Now, so I mentioned my first character in Baldur's Gate, Eldritch Knight. 
and I romanced Lazelle, uh, which those are two things that I'm kind of defining these playthroughs by is what am I playing and who do I want to end up with? And so playthrough number two, I've made a druid uh, because I, you meet two shape, or you can recruit two shapeshifters in your party um, during the game. And while playing as those uh, characters, I transform them into um, an owl bear, and I decided that was the most fun thing ever. And I ran around for a good chunk of the game with two owl bears in my party. Um, and I decided because you, know, you don't get like the first owl bear until you know the end of Act One, or the other one until the beginning of Act Three. And so I wanted a character that's a a shapeshifter for myself, you know. And so I played a druid, so that way I can basically play the game as an owlbear. And I intend the second time here to romance the character named Karlak. And then my third one will be a monk. I'll be romancing Shadowheart. And my last one... Um... I will be a, uh, a warlock as a throwback to my last actual D and D character, uh, who was in basically Eldritch Blast build warlock and just Eldritch Blast everything because uh, Eldritch Blast is good times. Go for it, painting. Good to see you. Brother Roxas. Good to see you too, brother. All the pretty models. Well, thank you very... Ah, damn it. Yeah, in my rush, I realized I've forgotten a bit here too. Oh, man, on all three of these. Okay, so normally... I do this little disc on the back blue like I do the shoulder pads. And so I just noticed I've missed that on all three of these models here. Damn it. Okay, well, good. Better to notice it now. Go for it, Roxas. Hellchild, how are y'all doing tonight? And is anyone else painting along tonight anybody else do putting in some work what is everybody working on either tonight or in general you know what's on your painting desk Nate Smithers, hey brother, I have some stuff to work on, but I'm holding off because I'm headed to the hardware store tomorrow to buy some workbenches. Nice. More hobby room. Excellent, excellent. That's awesome to hear, brother. Being able to expand your hobby space is always amazing. No painting for me. You know what I do because you're watching. Uh, two of my series, both starting with a B. Yes, sir. Bendy and Brambles. Brambles the mountain. That sounds right.
Okay. Let the washes on these three dry up a little bit while we start working on some of the shoulder babies and metallics here. Oh, oversold, my man. Um, because I am at a uh, uh, a uh, gaming event all weekend, if I don't get a chance to check out reactions and highlight uh, for a couple of days, I apologize in advance. All the little vents on the backpack. Mythos should give painting lessons. I want them buttery blends. Oh, well, thank you very much, brother. Uh, I have been meaning to do a couple of tutorials. Um, which shame on me for not getting them out during... Uh, uh, March for McCrag. But yes, I do intend on doing some tutorials. But, I mean... Also, you know, as a brother, you can always just ask during our hangouts, whatever you want to know, man. I'm always at your disposal. Uh, Bramble, yes. Awesome. <laughs> oh, no, not the caps. <laughs> oh, uh, good to see you, G, my man. Waz up. <laughs> uh, never apologize for being busy. There's no expiration date. I'm like a streaming service that doesn't remove stuff. Awesome. I do love and appreciate your transparency. Ah, oh, it's all gravy, baby. It is all gravy. Anyone is interested in checking out some Let's Plays, can definitely recommend Oversoul Gaming. Currently, I'm watching his Bendy series. I enjoyed his series of Bendy and the Ink Machine. Uh, and now I'm on to Bendy the Dark Revival. Now, I know a lot of people usually do the, the casing on their hell blasters one solid color, but I want to make the end here metallic. Oh, shit. I got a little blue on there. Well, at least I haven't done my highlights yet. Uh, so that way I can add my muzzle burn onto the end of the plasma rifles here. Now, you may ask yourself, with a man who's, like, racing deadlines, why is he making time to do all these muzzle burns? And the short answer is because I like them. They're, like, part of my painting identity at this point. Even when I'm rushing, I still got to be me, you know? Man, my hands are shaking. If only I could learn to color inside the lines. Man, when I first got into this hobby, I used to get so, so mad at myself for not painting inside the lines. Like, I would physically want to just punch myself in the face. And I don't know why. It never occurred to me at the beginning that you could just easily take your previous color 
and clean it up and it's no big deal. I used to get so mad at myself over nothing. Just paint over it, man. It's all good. Uh, there's no love like orky love. Isn't that what they say? Oh. Just popping in to show that love. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, I do have the printer set up uh, nicely now. Awesome. They look nice on the... Uh, they or, Though they look small on the rack. <laughs> Need more printers now. Well, that sounds like an investment. <laughs> too much coffee that's exactly what dark light said and that is probably true i am sipping on some gamers with coffee coffee right now i think there's a life lesson in there just paint over it man that's a good point brother i think that could easily be applied to a lot of silly things that i get mad about is that, you know what? I can just paint over it, man. <laughs> or as Markiplier says, paint over your mistakes with frosting. <laughs> That's what he said on an episode while baking with Rosanna Pansino. Adapted for this context, of course. <laughs> yeah, when I have a bad relationship, I paint over it. <laughs> when I'm angry, I paint more paint on, go out and wah! <laughs> if it's not from Oh Dear Diner and served in ba a baby blue thermos, I don't want it. Man, I really wish they would make some of that Oh Dear Diner coffee. And sell it here in the world. Oh, you know what? On um, Etsy, there are, for like specialty teas and stuff like that, people who make uh, tea blends and kind of um, theme them around video games, right? Like... For one of my favorite teas is Earl Grey tea, right? And a person has a shop that's Dragon Age themed. And they sell an Earl Grey called um, Grey Warden. Er, uh, Earl Grey Warden uh, tea. And so I wonder if similarly someone has made a fan blend of Oh Dear Diner tea, uh, coffee. I'd try that. Yeah, that'd be cool. One of my all-time favorite games is Dragon Age 1. Exactly! That is my favorite. That is one of my all-time favorites as well. Like, top three all-time faves. I think like they ca they capture a magic that while I love Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition Dragon Age 1 captures a magic I, I don't think any of the other games has replicated since then 
I think with the Origins formula, like the way you can be so many different characters and have so many different stories that are like not just the Grey Warden story, but, you know, personal to your story. You know, I, I think that gives the first one so much replayability. start talking about tea and a Brit magically appears. Good evening, Bofnet. So good to see you, my friend. <laughs> this newfound power of talking about tea and having my Brit friends show up. I have to learn to use this power for good instead of evil. And in Final Fantasy, Crystal Echoes is done. You should do another Dragon Age RP. Oh, man. I would not be opposed. Oh. We ran um, a Dragon Age tabletop game that I found in our local hobby store one night. Like, literally, it, I mean, because I'm such a big fan of the Dragon Age games, especially Dragon Age Origins. When we were at our local hobby store and I saw a tabletop role-playing system for Dragon Age... Like, there, it wasn't even a thought. Like, I saw it. It was in my hand. I was at the register. Like, these things just... Once I saw it, it was just a chain of events that couldn't be stopped. And, uh, yeah, we ran a two-year game? A two-year campaign on that? And it was so fun. I invented one of my favorite NPCs ever to this day. Um, he was kind of... Based off of Fizban in uh, Dragonlance, because he was an old, he was an old senile mage. He always had a little more to him than it appeared, but he always talked like this. And um, for certain boss fights where I didn't want to give my players too much aid. I would take him out of the fight, but it would always be doing something ridiculous. You know, for instance, um, he, uh, the party came across this uh, all-female um, uh, uh, group of rogues under um, uh, in one or in one of the cities that were all Antiven. And um, instead of joining in the fight, because he had a couple spells that might have made this fight a little too easy, I had him side. I had I sidelined the character to start dancing. He was doing an old man's dance. He's like, "I'll, I'll get them with my wiles." <laughs> Started like you know, he removed his out you know because he as a mage he was wearing like two layers of robes and I was like he started stripping his outer layer of robe. Get him, boys. <laughs> oh man and then later after the battle uh one of the uh characters told decker to put his robe back on and i made him roll a persuasion check for it <laughs> like he had to convince the old man to get dressed again oh man that was so good oh <laughs> <laughs> oh man we were in um the deep roads and uh he had this spell called stone to mud and uh anyways being that the deep roads was like in the mountain system it was all made of stone you know oh man sent them on some like uh slip and side slip and slide wild rides that was fun
that spell casting's all in the hips. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that was it was such a fun campaign. Of course, uh, as as with many games, though, like the players made that game. Like I can't even take credit for how good that game was because the players made it so good. Uh, without fail, I always romance Liliana, but perform the ritual with Morgan at the end. Uh, also, F. Logain. I'm, I'm on board with almost all of these. Uh, this last time I played, because I recently beat uh, Origins again, uh, I talked about this not too long ago, whereas I was going through a rough time and I just played Origins as my comfort game. And uh, this time, though, I, in a rare turn, I decided to actually... Uh, romance Morgan, and that actually was pretty nice. Now she act definitely softens up to you if you romance her, very Sundari style. Uh, Alistair always kills him. Yep. Uh, usually I go the route of um. Having Alistair, uh, you know, I let Alistair uh, get his vengeance, but then often, well, sometimes, often I'll make Alistair king and co rule with uh, the queen because there's no threat of civil war if you unite both sides, you know. Uh, Alistair's blood claim and Anora's political claim. You just unite both sides and keeps both sides happy, right? And so that's usually what I go with. Uh, but this playthrough, since uh, Borgen tells you, you know, like, hey, just so you know, after this I'm leaving. And I'm like, oh, well. I guess I'm single now. And... So I made the decision to um, have myself marry Anora and make myself king this time. Well, consort king. Which still kind of unites, you know, because um, Alistair defers to you, so it still unites Alistair's side and Anora's side. So. Which is cool. But yeah, usually I go the Romance Liliana around. I have to say, though, Zephyrin was a bit of an awakening for me. That's fair. That's fair. Also, the Witch Hunt DLC doesn't make much sense if you don't do the ritual. I always preferred my Warden to be alive for awakening as well as rather than make, make a new one. Very fair. Uh, oh, Origins hits certain vibes the other two don't. I get a feeling from it I can't place my finger on. Not nostalgia, but similar. Yeah. It definitely hits different for me, too. Um, funny, the name doesn't have meaning. It's about the origin of stories of different races and backgrounds you can choose. It's kind of a multi-layered meaning, because yeah, it does mostly refer to the different origins and backgrounds you can play. Which really, to me, adds a, a lot of depth to the game that the other two don't have. Don't get me wrong. Again, I love two and three. But yeah, it just... The Origins aspect definitely adds a lot of depth and replayability to the game. Um, but also, it kind of sets up like the beginning of the trilogy. So it's an origin in that way, too. Because the, everything that happens in 2 and 3 is still a result of what happens in 1. Right? It all feeds off of each other. So you, in the world building and the chain of events that happens, you know, the first game is also an origin point for, you know, everything that comes later.
in my rush I can see there's a bit of broken 3d printing support here um, but also in my rush to hurry up and get this done I'm not going to go back and sand and repaint it now um, so that's just a bit of battle damage done on the Space Marines armor there I am going to smooth out this little piece of broken support There is a little bit of a, I've got an event tomorrow hustle. And slapping down these metallics and doing these shoulder pads is also helping me feel like the uh, the hell blasters are coming together too. I gotta say though, because my hands are shaking a bit tonight, if this were not the night before the event, I might put this down and not worry about these shoulder pads tonight because it's so easy to mess up the shoulder pads i think my personal opinion but i'm going to hustle through it No, no, I said this was going to be a shorter stream tonight. I'm going to finish the metallics on these last three Hell Blasters tonight. And I think that'll be where I call it my stopping point tonight. Would be nice to see a game where your previous individual saves finish. E.g. Like the next Skyrim being ruled by whichever faction you sided with in Skyrim. That would be, and I gotta say to its credit, Mass Effect did that to a point. Where it's, like if you saved on the same machine, um, it would save your changes as you loaded up the next game. And then as they moved on to a new machine, they did this website where you could go and select the choices you made from the, pretty, the previous games. Um... That's that was pretty cool, although, you know, the fact that you had to stop and load in, you know, reselect all your choices was a little less immersive, but still pretty cool, I gotta say. But yeah, it would remember, you know, if you, like, a lot of your key moments, like, um... One of them is saving an alien queen uh, for a creature called the Rachni, uh, which uh, if was kind of like a cross between a uh, xenomorph from Aliens and a giant space cockroach. And if you save the queen of that race, it's remembered throughout the series. And even at the end of the uh, in at the end of the, the trilogy, not only is it remembered. But it actually matters because you end up um, getting those aliens as reinforcements uh, for the war in the third game, which is pretty cool. And like lots of little things like that, you know, if you invested in, you know, help save some kind of research from a previous game. That might get factored in. If you sided with a certain faction during certain storylines, that gets factored in. It's it's pretty cool how it all builds up. And the fact that you can do it on the website, while it's not exactly like carrying over, 
from what you did in a previous game as far as like save files go and stuff like that being able to select the choices you made lets that carry to multi-platform too and so you know um like i started the mass effect series on xbox but eventually finished it on playstation and then moved over to pc so It would, it, I get it would make storylines difficult, but it would, but if, uh, but if you could make it work, then it would be cool. Absolutely. Yeah. I've not seen that pulled off successfully a lot, but when it has been, it's been very cool. I had a little too much paint in the belly of the brush and just flooded that detail in there. Ugh. Just kind of wick it out. I know, I know. I usually paint to a, a higher standard, but... I am kind of in hustle mode for this event, so. Is it my best work? No. But am I going to get it to a playable level? Yes. It's funny because I was just struggling with this a little bit earlier today and then uncle adam from tabletop minions put out a video that was about sometimes you just need to get it done and that you know striving for perfection sometimes just halts your progress Something his, I think it said his father-in-law used to say is that the price of perfection is progression. Which makes sense to me. Although I'm, I'm probably ruining the quote. But makes sense to me. In the belly of the brush sounds like a great book song tile. You know, I could see that. Uh, I'm thinking of painting all my Space Marines Ultramarines. I have the Indominus box set and two of those smaller No No Fear boxes. Nice. If you think about it, in Final Fantasy Crystal Echoes, you have the people of both Kaipo and soon Portia on your side. So you could possibly be building up a similar thing. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, we are kind of like forging some alliances along the way, aren't we? And I think we've pretty much made an ally out of that uh, Chocobo farmer. I mean, you know. He seemed unsure about Makote, but not maliciously so. Just like he had no experience with us. Yeah, Nate, I'd love to see your Ultramarines, man. Ch <laughs> Jacobo Bill, he's trying... He's trying not to be racist so hard. <laughs> um, in Final Fantasy, there's a race called Makote. 
uh, and their uh, cat people, which is uh, the race I chose for my character. And we came across a Chocobo farm by, uh, run by a farmer named Chocobo Bill. And he'd never met a cat person before. And he was trying not to be racist, but he didn't say some strange things like he offered the rest of the party to come in. And then he looked at me and he said, like, uh, like, he's not going to shed inside. Is he? <laughs> Is he okay to come in? Can you imagine you let a cat person into your house and all of a sudden they're just doing that throwing up a hairball thing that cats do? <laughs> I'll have to do them off camera so I can truly give them a go. That would be cool to see, man. Indominus is such a good box, too. Get some really stellar units in there. I think you get Eradicators and Blade Guard. Assault Intercessors. It's a great starting point. Even the chaplain with the assault intercessors can get pretty punchy. I got a shack down by the swamp you can hunker down in. Just look for the giant snake. <laughs> ah, yes. Chicobo Bill was a little bit racist. Until I offered to cook, and he tasted my food, because my character is a chef. Good food changes people's minds sometimes. He did have some concerns about cat hair in the food. <laughs> Although after he thoroughly checked the food and found no cat hairs, he seemed to be okay. Almost done with the shiny bits on Hellblaster number three. <laughs> Garrett, what's up, my brother?
Ooh. Found support here that I missed. There we go. I'm normally a little bit careful, a bit more careful about removing supports. But I'm rushing at this point. And so something <clears throat> I discovered about my wolves while preparing for this event with Brother Atlas is that the reason why I um, suddenly hustled to print and paint and add these units to my army is because what I had for anti-tank in Space Wolves before 10th edition just isn't quite the same in 9th edition. You know, you, um, all the Melta weapons, Melta does good damage versus, um, vehicles, but Melta is only strength eight and the toughness of vehicles going way up means it's often wounding vehicles on five nowadays and that lack of reliability just makes Melta not very good against vehicles anymore. Um, then a lot of the, you know, last cannon weaponry I had before, you know, like on my Razorback, um, and the Redemptor Dread, I mean, uh, not Redemptor, the uh, Contemptor Dreadnought, the, the Standard Dreadnought, you know, a lot of these, they used to count as two last cannons, but now it's one twin length. That makes a big difference now because for each of those vehicles, you're not having the amount of anti-vehicle shooting that it can do. And so just as such, I found myself with very little anti... Oh, and then of course, Malay. The biggest anti-tank that used to be in my Space Wolves was just my Malay capacity. You know, whether it was Terminators, whether it was Thunderwolf Cavalry, Wolfen, you know, all of these weapons being able to strike at strength eight, strength nine in some cases, you know, made them very good anti vehicle. But that was because the toughness of vehicle is kind of maxed out at nine at the time. But now that the standard medium vehicle is 10, that means almost, almost all of your melee. For infantry, now dreadnoughts are different, but almost all of your melee for interest infantry is striking, on wounding on five ups now, and so just you cannot rely on melee to be anti-vehicle anymore, and so that really has rendered a lot of my anti-vehicle punch kind of ineffective, and we're kind of in a meta now where vehicles are kind of king because they're hard to destroy now which i mean you know i'm not throwing shade you know this, you want your tanks to feel hard to destroy i get it but yeah so and so i realized you know what my space wolves are still kind of the old school you know theory hammer i, I needed something modern to be able to put a punch into vehicles these days so anyways that's why I've got a, a lieutenant with um, lethal hits for my hell blasters to help with the vehicles, and I've got eradicators, and of course I'm bringing you know the armatures, uh, and because uh, the lancer I've got the wrong turret for, and I want to stay WYSIWYG. Well, not only do I want to stay... Are hammers still good against armor? Unfortunately not. Well, if you mean armor as in vehicles, no. Unfortunately, they're not anymore. Because on most infantry, your hammers will cap out at strength 8. 
And now, even your most medium armor, even a rhino is like toughness 9, toughness 10. Um, and your heavy armor, like a Lehman Russ, toughness 11. Land Raider, toughness 12. And so you're wounding on fives most of the times, unless you're just really good at rolling fives and sixes. You know, these weapons just aren't good against armor anymore. I know, F in the chat. I finished my first playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3, uh, Garrett, man. And now I've really got the urge for some uh, D and D, so I'm looking forward to our summer campaign. Hell yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Do, have we set a date uh, uh, for our next meeting to talk about characters and stuff like that? Admittedly, I haven't done my homework. Um, uh, and caught up on the, uh, the Discord yet. Which, you know, I've been trying to catch up on this event for the last few weeks. Once I'm past this event, I'll have more time. For that and for the Vampire Campaign, which I need to catch up for in Discord as well. <laughs> I heard that har hammers weren't as good against armor in real life anymore either after a recent patch. <laughs> I don't know why, but that reminds me of the scene in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen where a tank is uh, ripping through town and uh, all these constables are like running alongside the tank trying to hit it with their nightsticks. Clink, 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 clink. <laughs> and people say that I betray people. I promise you, once I get past this uh, narrative event this weekend... I will get caught up on Vampire in Discord. I'm sorry, Roxas. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Press X for doubt. Uh... We're not in the same group for Dylan's campaign, but we haven't said anything for Vampire. Roxas hasn't really said anything. Ooh, Leave Extraordinary Gentlemen. Deep cut. Underrated movie. Well, in my opinion, it's impossible to underrate anything with Lord Sean Connery. <laughs> X, press X to doubt F. <laughs> Sorry, I've gone a bit quiet. Just doing that lip of the shoulder armor just makes me so nervous. Just trying to do a deep focus. 
Hims is doing the focus. Much like Sucker Punch. Oh, man, I really need to watch that one. Always intended to. That's always been on my list. I just haven't. Oh, Boffnet says, even Zardoz. 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 If you could refresh my memory. Having trouble remembering Zardoz. Oh, Oh, as far as uh, underappreciating movies with Sean Connery, is that the, is that a Sean Connery movie? Shice. That's okay. That's just my base color there. I can go back over it. Like we were just talking about earlier. No need to get upset about missed strokes. Just paint over it, man. Zardoz is one of the worst, best Connery movies ever. So bad it's good. <laughs> Hunt for the Red October was my first Sean Connery movie that I can't remember seeing, although I know he was the James Bond. Got to get you a shirt that says, just paint over it, man. You know what? That's a good idea. That could be the next merch shirt. It says a philosophy for life, as well as uh, painting advice. I really wish that, you know, someone had expressed that to me when I was just beginning in the hobby and saved me a lot of frustration earlier when I wouldn't paint something perfectly. And I'd be like, oh my God, all these misstrokes. Rawr, I can't paint inside the lines. Rawr. I mean, it's probably one of those things that was just so, that's just so obvious, you know, why would anyone have said it to me? But at the time I was just like, yeah, I painted over it. It's messed up. Paint is in the wrong spot. Oh my God. End of the world. Why do I even paint? It's so simple. Hell yeah, hi -ya. Exactly. That's what it was at first. That's one of the reasons why I really like the tagline from the channel um, Paint Black Studios. He always ends every episode with saying, hey, if all else fails, just spray it black and start again.
Oh. So at the very least, at the very least, I will have, you know, blue, black, silver. At the very least, I will have my three colors plus basic. And I know you guys can't see it here, but all of this uh, gray stone basing, I'll dry brush it up. Some stony colors, pewter gray, light gray, light touch of white. I'll dry brush all the rocky colors um, before I go to bed. I'll put down some artificial snow and that'll be the basing sorted. I'll definitely have my three colors down. I would like to get them finished. I'm pretty sure I will not have the decals done before bed. But I want to go to bed because I have to. I know if I don't get any sleep, I'm going to be trash and not have, you know, the right headspace for the event tomorrow. And so I definitely want to go to bed at a decent time. Uh, oh, look at there. Got just a splotch of silver. It's probably from, yeah, right there on my pinky. Splotch of silver, but i just go back and touch it up with a little blue. No big deal. First, we'll finish the silver on this pad, though. Are these Hell Blasters going to be the best painted unit in my army? No, but they'll get me to the game tomorrow, and I can always go back and touch them up and make them even better if I want to later. I don't think anybody hustling before the night of a tournament or narrative event has been like, this is going to be my best painted unit. It's like, yep, I'm here the night before for a reason. What's funny is I had two months. Atlas and I were talking about this the other day. We had two months and somehow the deadline just really snuck up on us faster than I expected. Of course, I didn't factor in, you know, that I'd be out of town for two weeks of it. And then on top of that, I got called... Um, out of town for a potential new site, getting some new business, um, which put me out of town a third week. But, you know, you're supposed to plan for these kinds of things, you know. Always plan as if you don't have as much time as you do. And unfortunately, I planned my time as if, ah, I got two months. And yeah, so, you know, the setbacks built up and here we are. Don't forget the rules that the last unit you painted is the first rule, first unit to die. That's true. Uh, Evolution of Gaming, good evening. If you overcharge them all the time, you won't have to look at them long. Exactly. It's your world, and in your world, we don't have mistakes, just happy accidents. Exactly. Tell us uh, about the spirit black and start again. Sometimes you just get that urge anyways. Like, you just want to paint it black. Exactly. How are you doing, Evolution of Gaming? As a, profession, as a professional procrastinator, I can relate. You always think you have enough time until you don't. Exactly. As a procrastinator, it's like we live in that meme of, and it's morning. <laughs> I 
Good to hear evolution again. And of course, we almost always overcharge the Hell Blasters. I do love that, you know, you used to take the banner with them. So that way they could shoot on a 4 plus if they died. And now that rule is just built into them. Which, because you know they're going to shoot again if they die, you know, you're always... Makes you even less afraid to overcharge them all, all the time. I don't have time to procrastinate. Man, that's, that's understandable. My blood angels and possibly corn worshippers uh, look very similar in red. There. Darn, mini wargaming Dave reporting it out. Now I can never unsee it. <laughs> oh, you got to play against Dave, huh? You've been to the mini wargaming HQ. We live in such a hustle and bustle world uh, because everyone thinks they have to achieve a certain level of success for life to have meaning. But we must always remember to make the time for self-care. Absolutely. Oh, he just pointed out to a Blood Angels player. Well, he does love him some corn. And he painted up a Blood Angel army for his wife, so I can see where, you know, he put, came to that realization. All right, fam, we are at almost two hours in, and I did just say I was going to be painting up through the metallics. Metallics are down, probably going to wash them here in a minute, and then move back to you. Uh, the eradicators, but I'm gonna slap down a little more paint after this. I gotta look for my shoulder pads for my eradicators, but then I gotta get these guys sealed up and everything packed away. Uh, well, corn spin uh, after him for 10. Yeah, that's true. Who doesn't love corn, especially street corn? Corn is so good. I love street corn. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm gonna, uh, I've got to get everything packed away for, um, tomorrow, I'm going to a two day gaming event starting tomorrow. Um, and so we'll be out all weekend. Uh, and so I'm going to end the stream just a little bit early tonight. Just so that way we can have everything packed and ready to go. Cause uh, 6 a.m. is going to come super early and I'm not going to have mental capacity to pack anything in the morning. So <laughs> I just want to make sure everything's done, finished, packed. Bags by the door, codex, everything ready to go. Uh, have fun and good luck. May the dice gods be with you. Thank you so much. We just got an Olivia's Tacos in my area, and they have really good street corn. Nice. And steak tacos, too. That sounds so good. All right. I'm going to blank the camera one minute, so that way 
I can look at you beautiful people as we go out for the evening. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Thank you so much, Boffnet. Stay hydrated. Oh, yes. It's so easy to forget to take care of yourself during a big event like this. This is my first narrative event. Uh, but from the couple of tournaments I've been to, I know that, especially with my ADD, I can get so caught up in the games and stuff like that, that, uh, you know, I, I forget to do simple things like, you know, take care of myself, stay hydrated. So I got to focus on that tomorrow. Bring me back to the camera now. There we go. Thank you guys so much for joining me as I prep my army for tomorrow. And I'll let you guys, you know, I'll send you guys some pictures on Instagram letting you know if I managed to do it and uh, get everything finished on time for the event. But definitely it's important to make sure that I get some sleep for tomorrow so that way I actually have some cognitive ability in the morning. I appreciate you guys always for joining me tonight. Have a wonderful weekend. If you guys liked tonight's episode, make sure that you grab up an axe and smash that like button in the name of the Emperor. Drop us some comments down below and feel free to be part of tonight's ridiculous conversations. And if you guys are not yet subscribed to any of my friends down in the Friends of the Frosted Fist link tree below. And if you're not subscribed here, then we would love to have you as part of the pack here on the Frosted Fist. So subscribe. Until next time, guys, stay frosty.